ready for another 10 day trip that will take us from all the way up in Delaware down to Oklahoma. So that means I'm back at food prep. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, Mama's gonna make something yummy. Yeah. So I thought I would tell you um, some of the things I'm planning for meals um, because I try to keep things quick and easy when we're on the road. Um, and maybe that's something you're interested in um, or would like to know about. So here goes. For breakfast, we're going to have breakfast burritos. Uh, I really love the Tortilla Land um, tortillas. They're not cooked yet and you just throw them on the griddle. Um, main reason I love these is because the taste is fantastic. Also, the ingredient list is hard to beat. Uh, there's literally wheat flour, water, canola oil, salt and sugar. So, um, if you pick up any other brand, um, there's usually at least, you know, a chunk this big on there. Uh, so we're going to have the tortillas, eggs, and bacon to go in those. They're really quick. Uh, then we're going to have waffles. I'm going to go ahead and pre-cook these and then flash freeze them, put them in a baggie. Um, and you can treat them just like Eggos and warm them up in the toaster. Uh, the kids really love those in the morning. And then on the morning, if we have a slow morning, we'll do eggs and bacon. Um, just do a kind of a daddy breakfast morning. Uh, for dinners, I have an enchilada casserole, a chicken enchilada casserole, uh, a loaded uh, butternut squash, and a broccoli beef over rice. Uh, some of these items I will go ahead and cook all the way through so it's just ready to warm up. Uh, like the chicken enchilada casserole and things like the loaded butternut squash I will fix in pieces um, to be put together and warmed up and then the broccoli beef I'll cook the beef um, and then just chop up the broccoli and so when I put it on the stove it'll warm up the beef and then cook the broccoli at the same time. We're beginning our trip down to Virginia and got into our handy dandy planning stuff and uh, found out that the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and Tunnel, uh, you need to pull over and turn your propane off, which wouldn't be that big a deal. But everything I'm finding says the clearance is 13 feet, six inches. And our camper is like 13 feet, six inches. And that's the factory kind of spec. So if the suspension's off, if it's raised a little higher or anything, we might be scraping the top, which means we're going to plan a different way around uh, and not go down through Highway 13 and scrape the top of our camper off. it was 34 degrees with about a 30 mile per hour wind so I sort of lost feeling in my fingers that was less less pleasant than other starts of voyages we've had so far um, but everything went relatively smoothly um, got all the normal stuff done didn't get any video because honestly it was freezing and I was in a hurry um, and Sam was getting the inside ready, so when she gets the inside ready and I'm getting the outside ready, it's kind of hard to get video of what we're doing because she's wrangling the kids and I'm running around outside trying not to get blown over. Yeah, one downside of the cold is when we're normally, I'm getting the inside ready, I kick the kids outside, but when it's this cold, can't exactly kick them outside for very long. Our first stop is going to be down in North Levi's request? I think it was Levi's request. He really wanted to 
could go onto a battleship. We did the aircraft carrier down in Texas, uh, Corpus Christi? Yeah. Corpus Christi, Texas, the Lexington. That was a lot of fun, but I don't think we've ever done a battleship. So that'll be a new, new experience for all of us. signs on the highway that say we have to stop for inspection and make sure that everything is turned off and they have a spot for us to stop. yet again. Uh, we're following in the same trend of getting in everywhere after dark. Um, so right now Josh is getting the trailer unhooked and once he does that I'll hop inside and get us some food started. Um, I know we're all hungry and we're all really ready to be out of the truck. So here's our campsite at Fort Story. I'm honestly no, uh, not sure how on earth <laughs> We got this in first try last night with all these trees around. But I'm gonna count that as a win. But as you can see, it's honestly a beautiful campground. We're right on the beach. Yeah, so either beginner's luck or maybe we're getting some skill at this. I'm not really sure, but we made it in. Wisconsin. This thing is a floating city. It's incredible. Fought in four wars. Uh, thousands of men served on it. It's in the middle of downtown, which is stressful as heck to walk your children through. Or find parking. Or find parking for a dueling. But uh, definitely worth the stop. This is cool. Uh, we just got that on camera, you being a grosso. So what's what's different? Nothing. It's always the same. Uh, definitely 
definitely a cool, cool place to come spend an afternoon. So the kids were getting a little tired and hungry. So you know what I say? Let me throw a snack at it. We took a break from the museum, have a nice meat and cheese, little appetizer. And then once we finish here, we'll go find something really yummy for dinner. So as an added bonus, we had an aquarium here at the uh, West Constant Inn. As you can tell, he is a fan of fish. Fish. just now hooking up to leave Fort Story and we have loved it here. The campground is beautiful. Uh, you're right next to the beach and you wouldn't be able to tell it by all of these trees. I wanted to share a tip with you. If you're military or retired, you have access to all of the installations and many of them have fam camps. So that can get you really close to some great locations that you want to see or just fantastic locations in themselves like this. Um, just call ahead, you know, you can get access to any branch. Um, and right now we're right down the street from Virginia Beach, which is really expensive to stay at. Um, but by coming here, we spend a fraction of the cost and we had a wonderful dinner on Virginia Beach last night. Um, it's really hard to beat and some of them even have cabins um, and if camping isn't really your thing go check out the hotels the on-base hotels um, many of them are pretty nice and they get you all over the place so if you're on a budget you have to check those out that really saves um, some money for your vacation budget
think you're all hooked up and you think you're fully connected to your hitch, always do a tension test to make sure you're not going to drop your camper on your truck. Uh, so the way I do that is I raise my jacks just a little bit off the ground. So that way if it falls, it lands on the jacks, not on my truck. And then you either have chocks in the wheels or you engage your trailer brakes to full power. And then you just let the truck pull on it a little bit. Uh, if you're not connected, it's going to slide right out. If you are connected, it should basically stop the truck and you know you've got a good connection. Now we know we've got a good connection and we're not going to drop an expensive camper on an expensive truck.